a few years ago, one of the common questions I get about cribbage is how much of it is chance and how much of it is skill. John Chambers, in his book, says it's 100% skill. And what appears to be luck is a result of the decision made by the person that's making them. I'm not quite ready to go that far, but I do happen to believe it's 80% skill and 20% luck. There are two games out of 10. When I say 20% luck, there are two games out of 10 that your opponent will have such superior cards that it doesn't make any difference if you make absolute perfect decisions. You'll lose that game by 40 holes. Those, there's two games out of 10 that are that way. The rest of them are influenced by the decisions you make. And I wrote a paper, there's a copy of it in your packet, called Cribbage, Game of Chance or Skill. This uh, paper is on the internet, on the American Cribbage Congress website. I also presented it to the State Gaming Commission here, because the State Gaming Commission considers cribbage to be the same as blackjack or bingo. Same. Totally a game of chance in this state. Now, there are lots of states that don't look at cribbage that way, that they look at it as they would bridge, that it's a game of skill. And so now I started <coughs> out, and that's in that paper too, there are some parts of the cribbage game that are pure chance, as it is with all card games. The shuffle of the cards. Now, we ask for a minimum of three shuffles. That's the cribbage rule. Minimum of three shuffles. Those people that have played bridge have probably got used to shuffling seven times because they think seven times is the optimum card distribution. Seven times. It doesn't get any better if you do it more than seven. Not quite as good if you do it less than seven. And cribbage would require at least three. I don't know. I think you can practice cutting for two hours a day. And I don't think you'll get any better at it. So to me, that seems like that's totally chance. And you're cutting the cards twice, remember? You're cutting them in order to distribute the cards, and then you're cutting them to turn up a starter card. So there's two times that what you're doing with the deck may influence the outcome of the card distribution. The deal is alternate one card at a time. That's, if you think of Pinochle, where you're getting cards in chunks, three and four at a time, then the shuffle is probably more of a factor in the game of Pinochle than it is in the game of Cribbage. So I've never been that concerned with the shuffle, because we're going to deal these, we're going to kind of shuffle these cards as we deal them, and they're going to be cut before we do that. So I'm, I'm not one to argue about whether your shuffle is thorough or whether it's not thorough. If it meets the minimum requirement of three, then we minimize the, uh, the chances of you stacking the deck and taking advantage of me. OK. Now, the skill aspects of the game, and there's a whole bunch. It starts with when you pick up your cards. Which six do I keep? And you'll learn as we move along that there's a number of factors that concern to determine which ones I keep. Board position, which we're not going to get into tonight, is the first thing. I look where I am on the board where I should be, and that's going to influence the cards I, that I hold. Your crib or mine, that's going to influence the decision I make. I try to put good ones in mine if I can, and we'll get into that uh, as to what are the best discards to make to your own crib and which are the safest, lowest scoring discards to make the opponent's grip. So we're discarding card retention, basic pegging. Every hand has some basic pegging patterns to it. Pegging is a great advantage to the dealer. We'll get into that. There are very few hands in cribbage that give the non-dealer a pegging edge over the dealer. You should know exactly what they are when you pick them up. Because if you play the wrong card on the first play, the pegging potential of the hand's ruined. So 
basic pegging, then we're going to get into advanced pegging and pegging traps. There are certain cards that allow you to trap other cards in cribbage, and these are high percentage traps. You'll, you'll learn about those. Psychology and logic. We're going to have a class on how to develop x-ray vision. It's important to be able to read the what the other person might be holding. This is especially true in the pegging game. If you see a deuce and a six, you should register that there might be a seven or a nine there. It may be connecting cards two, six, seven, eight. But it, there's probably not a pair of queens. Once in a great while there would be, but you see what I mean? Uh, if you think of what kind of card would you hold if you had a deuce and a six, it might give you a clue to what the other person would hold. So we're going to get into board position, knowing the odds. It's, it is important to know what, what are the chances. If your opponent is counting first and needing 13, should you be nervous? I'll be not. No, because the chance of getting 13 is about one in six. So. I mean, that could, could influence, I don't know, if you get nervous easy, you could be nervous many, many times during the night when you didn't have to be, okay? <laughs> so now it's true it's possible to get 13, and somebody will once in a while, but as a rule, they're not going to score 13, unless you get into a pegging game with them, and then their 10 might become 13, okay? Critical position zones, theory of 26, those are advanced concepts on playing board position, and they are important to understand. And again, these are all skill aspects of the game. These are all things you can improve. These are all things you can't do a damn thing about. But it's a very short list, and lots, lots of room for growth here. There's some... Uh, Websites up here to be very helpful for you. The website of the American Cribbage Congress is www.cribbage.org. www.cribbage.org. There is a section on there called, is it library tips now or playing tips? And it uh, has a number of authors that have contributed material to that site. Very good, very good material. And it's free. You can print whatever you like. Uh, cribbageforum.com. For those of you who think you're a little more advanced, uh, cribbageforum.com has a panel of experts. There's a question on there every, every month about what to do with these cards in this situation. And you find that very good. If you want to do something every day, there's Cribbage Hand of the Day. Very good thing. It's on every day, Cribbage Hand of the Day. If you don't have it on your favorites, just type Cribbage Hand of the Day in your search window. It'll take you right there. There's no, there's no charge for any of these programs. They're all just show up and you're treated like you had a lifetime membership and paid a million dollars for it. Those are three very good ones.